contest, which will be contested in the Strike Force Light Heavyweight Division. Hodger Gracie, nine years younger, he's three and a half inches taller, and he's got a good reach. Most likely he's gonna use his jab, keep Prangley back a little bit, and then tie him up with those long arms. All right, let's go to the rules for tonight's fights. Three judges representing the California State Athletic Commission will score each bout using the 10-point must system. The winner of each round gets 10 points. The loser nine or less scoring is based on effective striking, grappling, aggression, and cage control. In California, the doctor or the referee can stop the fight. There are no kicks, knees, elbows, or forearm strikes to the head of a grounded opponent. Tonight's two championship fights are scheduled for five five-minute rounds, while the other two tilts on tonight's main card will be contested over three five-minute rounds. All right, fans, here we go. Light heavyweights in the cage. Scheduled three five-minute rounds. And our referee in charge, Josh Rosenthal. Gentlemen, you ready? You ready? Let's fight. Sign of respect. Wrangley in the blue gloves, Gracie in the red. They share one common opponent, Pancrase veteran Yuki Kondo. Not surprisingly, Gracie submitted him via rear naked choke, while Prangley defeated him via form of knockout. Gracie's looking a lot more relaxed than I thought he'd be on that stand-up. Yeah, he looks, he looks focused. He looks like he's got a little bit of rhythm moving, doesn't he, Frank? Yeah, I mean, he's a little stiff and long, but he, I think he's a long guy anyway. He looks uh, very surprised at the, at the comfort of his shoulders right now. In preparation for this bout, Gracie did work with UFC welterweight champion George St. Pierre on working on using strikes to set up takedowns. Not necessarily working on uh, the striking aspect, but what he can do to set up the takedowns using the strikes and probably will be uh, something to look for in this fight. Absolutely. First punch was from Trevor, it barely touched him. There's that height of uh, Gracie coming in. That's gonna be hard to get up there and hit him. Brangley, I think, needs to move his head, slide on the inside, make, make Gracie miss with a punch, and then throw. Look at Gracie's got that shoulder up like a boxer. That's real nice. That left shoulder push forward, real clean stance. I like that inside kick he was doing uh, to Prangley. I think he should go back to that. Well, he's, he's doing a good job with the jab. He's using a few fakes and feints. Uh, needs to do a little bit more of that. Keep Prangley guessing. Prangley was very relaxed at the fighter meeting, showcasing uh, his sense of humor, saying he knows all about uh, Gracie's submission skills. He says he has a glass neck, so he's going to try to avoid the chokes in this fight. And already, Gracie now standing arm triangle, perhaps looking to clinch up with Prangley, a couple of Muay Thai knee strikes. Prangley was smiling at him after that. Take down by Gracie. Beautiful trip. Prangley has got to start popping him hips. He's got to fight to get up. If he stays on the ground, it's a bad night. Prangley rated the training camp for this fight an 8 out of 10. He sparred with the 6'3 and a half Kyle Kingsbury to replicate Gracie's size. Also worked submissions with Luca Rockhold, a strike force middleweight who has been on the shelf due to injury, who we expect to return hopefully in March in Columbus, Ohio. Look at how Gracie's controlling Prangley's legs. He's trying to tighten in on him, squeeze him, and pinch him. Prangley can't move his hips. Now he's trying to pull that post arm out from underneath Prangley to get him down. It's a gradual thing. If you move too quick, your opponent jumps up to his feet, wall walks right up, and you lose. Him. Gracie's just inching along. Gracie mentioned that he would like to fight two to three times per year. The last time we saw him was in his uh, Strike Force debut against Kevin Randleman last May when he defeated the former UFC heavyweight champion via rear naked choke. He's also still very active on the grappling circuit. And Pat, I'm wondering. Can you do both if you want to be a world-class mixed martial artist? I think it only helps you. I mean, I know a lot of guys that have, have competed in kickboxing matches, boxing matches, and grappling matches. They'll even go to wrestling tournaments just to keep themselves sharp. Very bad position right here. The mount, arm bar is already set up for a side. Oh, he doesn't have the arm across. Oh, good. Minute and a half remaining in the opening round. A position that Trevor Prangley most definitely does not want to be in against a guy with the grappling pedigree of Hodger Gracie, but Prangley, the veteran, using the cage for his feet, and now Prangley going for that rear naked 
jump looking to test that glass neck of Prangley as Prangley so eloquently put it. We did that nice bridge off the cage and I thought he was getting out, but uh, Gracie just threw his hips right around, put him yeah. in a bad position. Amazing hip control by Gracie. He spun around him. That, it was incredible. And look and at very it. methodical, very patient. Now he's got the figure four leg lock on the body. Body triangle. The body triangle was outlawed in wrestling because it suffocates people. Right, I was going to say, you know how that feels. That literally sucks the life out of you. And Hodger Gracie submits. Trevor Prangley picks up his third consecutive win via Mata Leo, a.k.a. Rear Naked Choke. And the Gracie family member is 4-0 and oh as a mixed martial artist. His cousin, Enzo Gracie, in to celebrate with Hodger. Picks up the rear naked choke victory at 419 of the opening round. Well, here's where he got him into trouble, and I thought Prangley had bridged himself out, but look at look at Gracie just throw his legs around him and stay attached to him as he spun around, ended up on his back in a beautiful figure four position. I thought Pat, once he was here, he wasn't getting out. And here, he, here he's, he's got him locked. He's working his chin up. He's just slowly sinking himself into position. You can see it right there. As soon as his arm went underneath his chin, he's got the other arm locked. There's zero space. It's over. That was amazing technique when he took his back. He posted both hands, loosened his legs. So when Prangley spun over to his belly, Gracie's legs were loose enough. He just spin himself. He, he let Gracie go onto his back, basically. It's a really, really smart move by Gracie. Well, grappling skill shown. And let's go up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of four minutes, 19 seconds of round number one. A rear naked choke ends this contest as the fighter taps out. He is the winner by way of submission and still undefeated, Hajer Gracie. Hodger Gracie improves to 4-0 and oh as a professional mixed martial artist. Your third consecutive win via rear naked choke. Talk about your performance tonight. I think everything happened as planned, you know. I know he's uh, heavy-handed. I know I have the reach on my favor, so I play with the jab. I knew he was going to be a bit frustrated. He was going to come in hard. That was I, I planned to, to shoot him, you know, and happened exactly like that. What is it like to represent the first family of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Gracie, in modern MMA? I think only who is, who is inside the family know what it is, you know. It's, people say about pressure, yeah, the Gracie name is heavy, doesn't care, you know. When you fight, when you got your family behind you, it's another wave pushing you forward, you know. Let's hear it one more time, San Jose, for your winner, the undefeated Hodger Gracie. Now back to cage side. You know, the thing that stands out a lot to me is uh, percentage of strikes landed by Gracie, 62%. Right. One takedown attempt. 